Let's go live, people. Let's go live. All right. Are you ready? All right, let's go to the let's go to the channel. See if we can find the feed. There it is live, live and direct, bro. There it goes. Let's go to the channel. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. All right. Yeah, man. You people passed away. Diana Rigg, you probably won't know her. New Avengers, she was a big actor in the 60s. She passed away. She ran 82. And Alan... The original Boom Boom before Mancini Minter. Yeah, he passed away. Alan Minter passed away. Yeah, man. All right. So, here's what we do. Here's what we do. Let's talk about Minter for a little while. Let's talk about Minta, Alan Minta. All right, let's get him up. There it goes. All right. So basically, go his box rack up. Minta was a former middleweight champion. Yeah. So he started at light middle. Well, he didn't actually. He didn't. He, he was always a middleweight. He was always a middleweight. I think he was um, around, um, I think he was a lower weight as an amateur. So that's a bad start from me. I'm sure he did drop down to middle. But anyway, forget that for now. I thought he dropped down from right middle for some reason. It's late, man. It's late. It's late. So he used to cut pretty easy. He used to cut pretty easy. You know, he lost to, you know, people like this guy here, Don McMillan. You know, Minter was well ahead on points, it says, and had been down three times. Cut right eye brow stoppage. Look at his record 28 17 and 5. Don McMillan. Who's the, the, no one knows who I don't know who he is. He lost to him on cuts. He lost to Jan. Was it Mag's eyes? Once again, you see, Minter. Points lead on scorecard. Cut right eye stoppage. Next fight, look, he loses to the same guy twice. Cut eye stoppage. Two fights on the bounce. He used to cut his his skin. Just used to tear. Look once again, Ricky Ortiz, who's just 24, 22 and two. Cut left eye stoppage this time. He fights that guy Jan Magziaz again for the third time. Who beat him twice on cuts, and they were both DQ'd for not giving their best. That's interesting. That's interesting. He's got a Henry Cooper on his name, on his record there. But that's not the same Henry Cooper we all know. It's definitely not him. Yeah. I don't get too excited. So he won the British title by beating Kevin Finnegan on points. Kevin is the brother of Chris Finnegan. His brother Chris was a light heavy, pretty good light heavyweight as well. He was giving Bob Foster a lot of problems before he was knocked out. 
And Kevin Finnegan, he, he was a very good boxer, actually. Very good boxer. Um, this was for the vacant British title, vacated by R.I.P. My friend Alex Sterling's old man, Bunny Sterling, R.I.P. Yeah. First immigrant to win a British title from Jamaica. So that was vacated by Bunny Sterling, and he beats Finnegan on points. It was, um, it won't tell you here, but I know a little history on these fights. It went down to the wire. It was all decided on the last round. Tough fight. Very tough fight. Yeah. So, defends against Billy Knight. Never heard of him. And he fights Finnegan again. It's a rematch. This was, this was a really good fight, you know. He outboxed him behind that southpaw lead. Good fight. Beat Tony Licata. This is when, you know, he's becoming pretty popular now. He knocked out Sugar Ray Seals, a former Olympian. You know, knocked him out in five. Beat Ronnie Harris. Not a bad fighter at all. You know, this was a this was on cuts though. It was a very good name. He actually ended Emil Griffiths' career, outpointing him in 10. Yeah. I think this was it. Was this in France? Stat Louis Sale, Fort Tibble. This was um Griffiths' last fight. Let's have a look quickly. No, Monaco. Yeah, that's right. Monaco. Carlos Monzon was on the bill. Outpointing the very skillful in his own right, Rodrigo Valdez. Yeah. Very good fighter. He defended his European... No, he won the European title against Jacko Pussy. And it's, I'm not calling him Pussy. An Italian. And um, Jacopi died of his injuries, died of injuries after the fight. The ringside doctor was actually later found guilty of manslaughter. Yeah. He died as a result of his injuries during that fight. He beats Doug Demings at Wembley. Good win. Tough guy. Then he challenges Vito Antofermo in Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Wins a split decision. Now, we look at the scorecards. Chuck Minka has it 144, 141. And um, that's a decent score. It was a very close contrast of styles, you know what I mean? One judge had it for Vita and Tefermo, 145, 143. But then you go to Roland Dakin, who was a British referee. His scorecard was 149, 137. He basically gave Simpson, was it 13 rounds? And he was heavily critiqued. Like one of the officials in Vegas, he, he, he had a lot to say, but he like he wasn't very complimentary. And um, Dakin lost a lot of a lot of credibility after that that scorecard. There, it was incredibly biased for the British fighter, but you know what I mean. He didn't care. Then he rematched. Vito Antifermo at the Empire Pool at Wembley. This time, you know, Vito, his equilibrium seemed all around, all over the place, and his face got cut up, and Minter boxed him easily, cut his face up. The cuts are like Vito. If you look at Vito Antifermo's face, and fights his brow. Just looks really raw and rough because he just used to bruise up and cut up around that face pretty badly. You know what I mean? And 
He lost his title to Marvin Hagler in 1980. Uh, uh, Got to tell the full story, even though he's dead. You know, um, beforehand he said, "No black man is ever going to take my title." He said he regretted saying it. He said he was told to say it. And I'm wondering who told him to say that. It was pretty dangerous. You know, people say stuff, oh, well, look what Devin said. Look what Hopkins said. Well, the difference was is that, you know, no one's, uh, it's racist, yes. But when, when Hopkins said it to Calzaghi, Calzaghi was never in danger of getting his life taken by Bernard Hopkins' fan base. And, like, the truth is, most, uh, not most, a lot, of Minter's fan base was National Front. And I'm not singling out Alan Minter, but that's just how the United Kingdom was back then, man. A lot of the boxers, the white boxers, their support base used to come from the football terraces and the National Front was an extremely huge presence in the United Kingdom. You know what I mean? And basically, um, Hagler ripped his face to pieces I mean, it was just destroying him. And they had to stop the fight. And the crowd went crazy. They threw bottles. Anything they could get their hand on, they just throwing missiles into the middle of the ring. The police and Hagler's corner had to make a protective shield around him. You know what I mean? And get him out of there, basically. It was... Um, it was some of the worst scenes in a British ring. One well, some of the worst scenes. Chaotic. Hagler never came back to the UK after that. You know, could say more on it, but we'll leave it there. You know what I mean? We we said enough. We I mean we pointed it out. And um, he lost to Mustafa Hamshow, who was a top contender on points in Caesar's Palace. He was a fading force at this stage, and his career was effectively over after losing to Tony Simpson, the new boy on the block. He got bludgeoned to the canvas in free, got destroyed. And um, it was on grandstand. It was on grandstand. And Minter came into the ring with his sponsorship on his shorts. Was it Daft Trucks or Leyland Trucks? It could have been Daft Trucks or something like that. And minutes before the first bell, they cut the broadcast off because he had the sponsorship, the logo on his shorts. And you know what I mean? That was that. A lot, of, a lot of people were very disappointed. Very disappointed. They didn't get their boxing that night. Very disappointed. They cut cut the fight off. The fights were surfaced online, though, because um, it broadcasted to some countries in Europe. So it's online if you want to see it. Simpson versus um, Minter. Minter was a southpaw. Good southpaw. Good straight puncher, bit upright, didn't attack the body or anything like that. It was, it was like a classical British style, but pretty good. Good fighter, good fighter, you know. RIP, he died of cancer, 69 years of age. He has a son named Ross Minter, who used to box. Obviously, wasn't as talented as his father. I think Ross is promoting now. You know. Minter done a lot of commentary work. And he was a good commentator. He was good. Done his thing. So he goes down as... um. That's, I'd say, um, and, and, and what you have to remember is, yeah, like, see, people think that all this alphabet nonsense is, is a new thing. What you got to remember, 
when Minta beat Vito and Tafirma and became middleweight champion, you do realize in 1980 that this was the only undisputed title in boxing, even in 1980. You do realize that. Yeah? There was no undisputed champions in boxing apart from the belt, the two belts that Minta won from Vito and Tafermo in the middle. Uh, Lee's belts at uh, heavy, they were all split up, you know, because um, he, he was gone by this time, wasn't he? He retired and Larry Holmes, no, well, Ken Norton got the WBC belt. He lost it to Larry Holmes. And John Tate got hold of the WBA belt. You know, and that got passed around a lot. In nineteen eighty there was no undisputed heavyweight champion. We were, we were still awaiting in at the light heavyweight class until Michael Spinks. I'm going off the top of the head now, I could get some of this wrong. I think when Michael Spinks beat it wasn't Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, he won that belt from Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. He won the WBA belt from Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. And he unified against Dwight Muhammad Kawi, then became undisputed. Yeah, so big up Alan Minter. Big up Alan Minter. <clears throat> RIP. Yeah, man. All right, what's going on? George, what's good? Wayne, what's happening? John Skies, Big Dan, Actual Facts, Big Up. Lydia, what's good? Jeff Boxing, yeah, you know I mean? Nathan Reynolds, Tom, what's good? Lou123, Joshua Little John, what's the science at Boxing Beats? Yeah, man. The X runner, Diana Ring in black and white on me telly. Very nice, RIP. Yeah, she was a very attractive woman. Sylvester. Joshua Littlejohn, big up. Oh, is it messing up? Ah, well. Tough clap. <laughs> Chris Mateus, big up. Big up, Chris. Thomas Salford says he loves the channel. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Actual facts boxing talk. Santos says RIP. Colton Bradley says time goes silly quick. Tone said Minter was very gracious after his defeat to Hagler. I believe he regretted and felt embarrassed by his pre fight racially charged comments. Skilled with movie star looks, he could have been massive. Yeah, we, yeah, with Minter, you know, like he just, his skin just used to tear to pieces, you know? His skin just used to tear to pieces. Yeah, he was, he was a good fighter, man. He was a good fighter. He was unfortunate that he had to fight Hagler, I guess. Some people are saying the connection is bad. I don't know. I don't know, people. I don't know. This is the best I can do right now. So, yeah. Minta did his thing, man. Did his thing. He represented. There were some really good fights back in them days, man. Like, um, if you get time, there was one guy. What was his name, man? His name was Frankie. So Frankie Lucas, yeah? He was a crazy mixed race brother. And um, he, was, he was just he was like a genuine crazy man. But he was a he was a good boxer. He was in quite intense. Not not world class. I'm not saying world class or anything. 
But like the fight he gave Tony Simpson, man. Like, <laughs> Frankie Lucas, man. Jesus and Simpson. This is a war. Absolute war. I don't think um Alan Minter fought Frankie Lucas. I don't think he did. Right. So everyone's talking about this um, Canelo thing. I think a lot of people are saying it's the end of the zone. I think it's a little early for that. I think people should wait for more information to come out. Um, it's a little early. I guess Canelo's got to do what he's got to do. A lot of people are mad at him. A lot of people are hurling a lot of criticism at the zone. And I, I understand that. I, I believe they've um, probably made more errors than what they need to make right now. You know, um, here's what it is, man. Here's what it is. But it's not, see, the thing is, everyone's, it's the zone, the zone, the zone. All, well, Oscars has been named in the lawsuit too. I think Golden Boy could come with worst, if anything, you know, if, um, it, it's a difficult, see, no one knows really. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Because everyone's saying, ah, oh, yeah, Oscar went behind his back. Well, promoters often do, well, I mean, work, you know, and make deals, and they don't try and, they don't get every single word of a contract consented by the fighter. It would take too long. They, they'd never get anything done. So I think this is the, this is just me making a few assumptions. I think Canelo was okay with Oscar making some of these deals and getting him a 300, whatever, thousand million dollar contract. I think some of it was okay. But the bits he wasn't happy with, he wasn't happy with. Like, um, he didn't want to be told to fight Golovkin when it's not in his contract. Now, Oscar may have said to DeZone, he see, Oscar probably said, yeah, they, uh, he offered DeZone the world to get that bread, not just for Canelo, but himself. He made bread out of that. So Oscar said what he had to say. Yeah, you'll fight King Kong twice. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't make him do it. And here's the thing, though. I'm not understanding the zone. You see, this is the thing with me and what a lot of people don't, don't get. The difference between me and a lot of people, when they see me supporting things, I support when it's functional. I don't just indefinitely support things. Yeah. What to me is it wasn't functional. Is the zone being so desperate to put Canelo and Golovkin on? Why are they so desperate to put that fight on? It doesn't make sense to me. Now here's why it don't make sense. HBO already put it on twice. I don't think neither fight did a million pay-per-view buys, did it? What was what was, what was the pay-per-view buys on both fights? Let's have a look. Let's have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. Cannoli versus Triple G. Right. Okay, I'll tell a lie. No, I made, I made a mistake. So the rematch done 1.1. 1. 1. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not actually bad. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. I tell a lie. But here's the thing, right? It done 1.1. 1. 1, the rematch. And uh, I'm not sure what the first fight did. But HBO still went out of business. You're not going to sustain your company on one fight, are you? They still went out of business after doing that 1.1. 1 .1. They still walked away from boxing. 
And, you know, HBO put it on twice. And the world has moved on from Gennady Golovkin. Golovkin isn't the force that he was, that HBO built. See, HBO built Golovkin up. It was them who built him up. So now the zone, they want to, you know, still be drawing off that. Gennady Golovkin is fearless, the biggest punching boxer ever. No, it's gone now. It's gone. They should have been building up other attractions over there, you know? Why are they so desperate to put that fight on? The Golovkin myth has been busted. It has been busted. Why are they going to keep guys like... What's his name now? Demetrius Andrade. We're going to keep him on there for... And be paying him bigger purses than he's ever been paid and he's not in no significant fights. Why would you go on Oscar De La Hoya's say-so that you're going to get... Can and now they're talking about putting Canelo in with... Uh, who was it? Was it Khabib? A Masador? So what are their intentions now? You're just going to put celebrity matches on and novelty boxing on because you can't make the boxing pay? I mean, the boxing fans are not going to be happy because I don't think they're going to be happy. I don't think, you know what I mean? Like, if the hardcore fans who buy subscriptions are, are being faced with watching Jake Paul, because some people ain't into that. And it doesn't bother me, but I understand why. They don't want to pay for it, period. If that comes up on their app and they're charged for it, they're going to get rid of it. Logan Paul, Jake Paul, and KSI, they, they, they're not going for it. They won't go for it. You know, even like the these um hybrid matches between UFC fighters and boxers, a lot of boxing fans are not gonna go for it. You know, either you're gonna take boxing seriously. But here's what they did. Wrong wrong. You know, if they're looking at fights like Canelo. Versus Golovkin. You got to look at Golovkin. Let's look at Golovkin. Golovkin was basically on Universal, that European promotions. Then, you know, he's got that lawsuit with um, them guys from there, actually, the two brothers. And then he was built on HBO. It took them a long time. Like, Golovkin wasn't a success immediately, was he? I mean, how much did his fights with, Pete, with um, David Lemieux do. It didn't hardly do anything. Willie Monroe. That weren't no big pay-per-view bias. So it, it, it took a little while to build him up. Then when they got the Canelo fight, yeah, they're getting 1.1. But that took a long time. These guys at the zone, they're trying to buy success straight away and not develop success. This is where they went wrong. They're giving Golovkin, who must be at least 35, 36. And when I say, listen, let me not go too far about they went wrong because a lot of people are going over the top saying they're done. I'm just saying so far, these are some mistakes that they could have potentially made. You're, you're giving a 36-year-old 15 million a fight to fight Steve Rolls and Sarah Meta and stuff like that. It's not, not how to do it. This, this this wasn't the the right way. You have to rely on hungry fighters, hungry young fighters, who at least for if okay, let's say you give a hungry young fighter who's just got a belt or is about to challenge for a belt. If you give him a ten fight contract, he's still going to be hungry. He's not going to be in such a position where he can be diva-ish and he's going to want to prove himself, you know. At this stage here, the zone bought Canelo and Golovkin when their bellies were fat. You know what I mean? Their bellies are fat. They're done eat already. They're not going to be taking orders, you know. Why are they going to? They think they're bosses. They think they're bosses now. 
It is what it is. Canelo's got to do what he's got to do. I don't know enough details to be mad at Canelo as some people are. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. You know? He's just another boxer trying not to get screwed, is what I'm figuring, really. You know what I mean? Simple as. Simple as. Simple as. I did have some details on it somewhere. I can't remember what I've done with it. Um, see if I can find it anywhere. Did have some tweets. Ah, what did Steve Kim say on it? He had a little debate with um, Lou DiBella. What's up, sis? This is my sister in the house. Sure. Big up. I'm not going to say her name because I'm going to give away my, my government name. But she's here. Um, all right, let's share it. Big yourselves up, people. Where did it go? Where did it go? What was I reading again? What the fuck was? Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. Steve Kim, if you're a guy like Canelo, you go pay per view all the time. You can pick and choose who you want and get paid accordingly. Also, like Canelo in 1997, it allows you to be more active if you want. Hmm. Lou DiBella says, but pay per view. Now, it's not what pay-per-view was when he was at HBO and Oscar was fighting. It's not what pay-per-view was five years ago. Too much theft and inadequate, nearly impossible policing. Canelo hasn't fought one fight for the zone that would have shot a million pay-per-view buyers. Different world now. See, and Lou DiBella makes a good point there. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, um, we took, we spoke about Triple G being built up. Well, Canelo was built up in Showtime with the Mayweather fight and beating guys like Austin Trout. And I think, was Lara? What, what, what was Lara? HBO was Showtime. But, you know, by the time he went to HBO, he was a developed fighter by that time and who could do pay-per-view independently. He was built up. And... um He had the fighters to make him a pay-per-view attraction. Guys like Koto, obviously Mayweather. You know, there was good fighters around. Guy Trout was unbeaten when he beat him. He had the fighters around him to build him up. Even guys like Mosley when he fought him, he was past it. But, you know... People like watching Shane. He's a big name. So Lou has a great point now. It's a different world now. Yeah, I agree with Lou. It's a different world. He says, I don't see a settlement anytime soon. Oscar is stubborn and the zone made a terrible commitment. Highly unlikely its board and investors will want to settle. What suitor has the best chance of securing his services once it's over? Top rank? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Big ups, yes. Well, is what it is, man. Is what it is, Canelo. Canelo got to do what he's got to do. Canelo's got to do what he's got to do, man. Big up, Lennox. 
All right, people. What are they saying to replace? Now, I don't see a settlement anytime soon. Oscar is stubborn. His own made a terrible commitment. Highly unlikely. I don't. Well, yeah, I, I don't think um, the zone are going to have to scrap Canelo to to the finish. You know, I don't. I don't think they can just fold in like that. You know, how's it going to look? How is it going to look? And all you see, people are very are making a lot of assumptions. They're saying, "Ah, oh, the PBC are going to be this massive, you know." Um, Forcing boxing, they're going to take Canelo. Well, don't don't be so hasty. Didn't you hear what Lou DiBella said? The pay per view market is not the same as it was back then. The only person they've heard, like what, what did Pacquiao and Thurman do? Wasn't that their biggest pay per view in recent times? And what was Manny? What Ma Manny was built up on the old system. He wasn't built up on, on um, the PBC. He was built up on HBO. The old system, when boxing boxing was thriving more five years ago, when Pacquiao and Mayweather became pay-per-view stars and when Canelo started to be, become a force, boxing was thriving a lot more. Yeah, man, it is what it is. And look... You know what's really annoying is all these people coming out making their videos and they're all really clever now. Oh, you see, someone saw was right that Dazon was going to flop. So you're you're predicting that that Dazon was going to run into COVID nineteen basically because look. I don't think what they've been doing has been very um, practical, a lot of the moves. But if it wasn't for COVID-19, they would still be trying to put certain fights into the mix and it would still be ticking over and turning over. But they can't get crowds in there. And what they've did, they've offered to pay fighters exorbitant purses more than what they're getting at the PBC, more than what they're getting at top rank. But they couldn't foresee this coming, this pandemic. So unless you can, unless you can, you could tell me, yeah, I knew that the pandemic was coming. I ain't listening to you. You're talking, talking rubbish. You're just trying to make yourself sound clever. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, right, right. You knew that in some location in the world they were going to start eating bats. And scorpions. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, you mean some people are too much, man. Some people are too much. It's too much, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Big Dan says, the zone are a failed project in terms of boxing, in my opinion. I'm going to say, how are they failed? They only started in 2018. And then the pandemic came early 2020. This is what I'm saying, man. You see that comment there? It's so reactionary. It's so reactionary. We got PSSB. That guy. He's bigging up Lennox and boxing beats and rhymes. It's me. Big yourself up. Yeah. Jason, he says, the zone is a good concept, but those crazy Americans aren't ready for a money saving platform. Canelo wants away from Oscar taking this opportunity. Well, big up Lisa Bills. Big up Nick. I tell you what, right? Part of the lawsuit is um, Oscar exploring 
his other options on where to put fights. And, you know, he's he he needs to see that contract to see if they're able to stop him from taking a fight with Al Heyman to fight Yildrim or whatever, because that's gone to purse bits. So that's part of the, the lawsuit, you know. But look, when it was all good, when he was getting, I mean, he got 15 million to fight Rocky from Stocky. I mean, <sighs> how much times have we seen elite fighters get so much for a fight against such limited opposition? You know what I mean, it was all good then. Um, yeah, I'm sure he got the full 33 million against Danny Jacobs and Kovalev. I, I'm I'm not sure what his reluctance is to fight Triple G again. I mean, he's old. Legs are stiffening up. Doesn't handle body shots too well no more. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, man. Yes, people. Michael Kelly, mate, are you drunk? What's going on? Well, why do you care if I'm a drunk? What's it got to do with you? What has my sobriety got to do with you? Nothing at all. Are you gay? <laughs> I don't care. Tone, it was always a massive gamble giving Canelo that long contract, but the zone has lost the plot on this one. Yeah, it's gone a little haywire, hasn't it? It's gone a little haywire. It's gone a little haywire. Let's just say that. Anonymous, we all were struggling in this COVID age. The zone got money issues just like the rest of the sports broadcaster. Let's see what happens. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, Frank Warren, you know, he's got issues. He's got a lot of issues. Um, we we still don't know what the situation with is at the PBC. Yeah, they got a little budget to put some cards on. I mean, but they got rid of golf. Is it the golf tournament? They got rid of that. And that was um good money at one time. And there there still could be talk that the boxing if the and I tell you what, if the boxing cards don't bring in the numbers like they're supposed to, we'll see. We'll see. What's up with the PBC? You know? We'll see. Early days. Early days, people. Jason, he said, they thought Canelo would persuade PBC fighters to jump ship and it didn't work. They underestimated the power, power of Heyman, the cult master. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I definitely agree with that there. <laughs> definitely agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. Anonymous, if the UK goes into another lockdown, do you think we are going to get Joshua versus Pulev this year? <sighs> Don't know. Don't know, man. It looks like um, they're going to be um, bringing some restrictions back. Like uh, um, there can't be more than a certain amount of you in any one space congregated. Um, I think they're going to close down Speaker's Corner soon. Um, and the pubs, I, f I don't know. I think they're going to, you know, do a bit of distancing in the pubs and stuff like that. <laughs> the Triple G says, Beats is using Tesco Wi-Fi. Uh, if it's that bad, I'm probably going to cut this one off and then um, maybe come back tomorrow. Big up Lennox, he says, <laughs> Clonello in his own lawsuit states he's never seen a DAZN contract. 
which is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Which is a bit of a problem, obviously. I mean, I mean, what's Oscar doing, man? Oscar, see, Oscar's an idiot. Oscar's about to get sued by his own fighter, and he's talking about making a comeback and stupidness. Crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah. Anonymous says there's nothing wrong with this connection. Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's um, frustrate you a bit more. Because <laughs> when you people don't get no attention, <laughs> When you, when you starve these people on oxygen, they don't like it. That guy. Some of the MTK Global Chat over here beats. You made it. Oh, they are? Nervous is saying the connection is bad. My sister saying the same thing, though. <laughs> The Tesco Wi-Fi. Big up, look. All right, listen, there's no point doing it then. If the connection's down, we're going to leave it for now, yeah? We'll leave it for now. All right, people. I tried anyway. I tried. I tried. I tried. Hopefully, um, I'll do one tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be a bit better. We'll see how it goes.